Hey folks, so I just got back from my friend Sandra's house. She let me borrow her oven to cook a pizza. And man, that turned out to be one of the best pizzas I ever had, if I do say so myself. It was a sourdough I had rising all day long, so it turned out really, really good. And uh, so I'm back at the house now, and uh, you know, the, Nikola Tesla seems to be really popular these days, so... I thought I would do some more videos where I discuss the works of Nikola Tesla and sort of go over what uh, I believe he was actually trying to do. I've read his patents and and uh, he's very straightforward in his explanations. So there seems to be a lot of mystery to a lot of people what Tesla was doing. And so I just want to sort of clarify some mystery on some of the different ones, the ones that I like particularly that are available to the public <clears throat> supposedly there are some secret patents that you know that tesla had that we don't have access to but most of his patents that i'm aware of some hundred something patents that are easily found online and this is one of my favorites this is one of his dynamo electric machine from 1889 this was a direct current generator and this was a high current generator, perhaps not terribly high voltage, but it would have been a very high current DC generator. So you would have been able to do probably like, you know, electric arc welding and run electric arc lamps with this. And uh, so we'll just look at the drawings and I'll sort of kind of give you an overview of what's happening here. So anyhow, what you have is these two copper drums. They're shaped like a pulley. Okay, so here is the, here's the inner portion. Here's the inner portion. This is like a disc of copper, and there's where the copper is clamped onto probably a steel shaft. The shaft goes through shaft collars or bearings. Okay, there's a slot here where the drum, this is the side, this is like the front view, okay? There's two drums, okay? Now this, this belt around here is actually a conductive belt, and he describes this as being like, you know, braided copper wire or something. So this is like uh, or stainless steel mesh. This is like a, a, a steel or, or copper screen or mesh. This is a conductive belt. It's not a rubber belt. So this is a conductive belt. And it goes around the outside of these copper drums. These are like copper drums. There's the outside of one. Now what you see in here is showing is these windings, he says. Uh, or he can use permanent magnets. Now he uses these. He calls it self-excited so these are the windings of, of electrical wire. They're wrapped around this way, coming towards the camera. Okay, so so in here, this there's a there's an iron this iron poles in here are wrapped with the copper wire, and then this outer part, this is the drum. So, and in here you see this is this where you see this T part. That's where the copper disc comes out, and the copper disc makes a drum like a pulley like a pulley wheel okay now what happens is the current goes this way between like this is like electromagnet see it's wound this way so think of an electromagnet there's north and you know north and south this one it goes north south in the other direction okay so what happens is when this disc spins through it's cutting right through the entire magnetic field and the entire disc is conductive so the current is going to go out towards the drum and it's going to conduct around the belt towards this other one. Now this other one, the field goes this way, okay? So the current that's induced comes from the drum into the shaft, okay? Now on the ends you see here, there's a thumb screw and a brush connects to the end of the shaft. The current runs through the shaft again here. There's a thumb screw and a brush on the end of the shaft. So what happens is the lens force induction sends a current that goes out to the rim of the disc, a high current DC direct current. It goes through the conductive brush to the other drum, and then it comes from the other drum. It goes into the shaft to there. Now these are just pulleys or gears to, to drive to drive one, you know, one or both of these drums. But they spin the same direction. That one's going to go that way. That one's going to go that way. It's the magnetic fields go in opposite directions. So the current goes from the shaft out to the drum, around the belt, 
into the next drum into the other shaft positive and negative there's your two positive and negative there's your positive and negative in your negative terminal positive terminal and your negative terminal <clears throat> and so that's how it works so it did have to have an input motive force you had to have a windmill or a you know a hydro power a waterfall a paddle wheel and a waterfall or something a water wheel turning it um, so there's the input through the shaft and again these are just copper drums with a conductive belt on the outside there's a very powerful magnetic field and the drum spins inside a slot so the magnets go right up to the drum there's a very intense magnetic field all across these this copper disc and again it's just a solid copper disc here so it's very high current probably you know fairly low voltage but it's gonna be very high current you could probably weld with it even if it's only you know, even though it only ends up being a couple of volts, it's going to be such high current, DC current, that you would be able to literally weld with it. Okay, so this is a super powerful, super high efficiency, and, and there's virtually no counter motive force because you're not creating in a magnetic, this drum is it, it, not really creating very much magnetic resistance um, against this field. You know, because the current is just, is, is just spinning straight out. On the other one, the current's going straight in. It's not circulating around and making its own counter magnetic field. See, the magnetic field comes from these coils inside here, or these could be permanent magnets. So you go north and south that way, and then south and north down here. But this just shows where the windings are on the inside, and then the drum is on the outside. Okay, and then the drum is inside a slot here. Okay. And, uh, and it forms like a T-shape, but that's the outside of this copper drum. So we'll go down maybe and read a little bit of it for you. <clears throat> but if you like these type of videos, please click like and subscribe. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, you can find me, it's all one word, Inventor John Gay. That's J-O-H-N-G-A-Y, Inventor John Gay, all one word, on Patreon. And uh, any, any help that you can give, uh, you can join Patreon, I think, for as little as a dollar per month and, and join our crazy little channel. I like to rant about suppression of, of clean energy and stuff. And Nikola Tesla was one of the, one of the ones who was suppressed the worst because he invented the most. He really invented the entire 20th century. He invented AM radio, FM radio, which is basically Wi-Fi too. His, his transmission tower, that was, that was a, a microwave transmission tower. High voltage, pulsed at high frequency, and, uh, but broadcasting in all directions because it was a dome, like a huge dome supercapacitor. He invented the supercapacitor, the fractal supercapacitor. That was what his dome was. It was, it was a dome with little domes on, the, on little domes on top of those little domes. And so that's basically like a fractal supercapacitor. So Tesla really invented was you know, 100 years ahead of his time, and they spent 100 years suppressing his information. So, uh, I'm just going to kind of read through and, sh and tell you about this patent here. Um, so, he says, in order to develop economically electromotive force available for practical purposes, necessary to rotate conductor, have very high rate of speed, or use disc, large diameter, cylinder, great length, a cylinder of great length, but in either case, it becomes difficult to secure and maintain good connection between the collecting brushes and the conductor owing to the high peripheral speed. Okay, so this is the perimeter of the drum. The brushes are going to want to bounce and arc, and you're going to lose current. So, uh, he says, it's been proposed to couple two or more discs together in series with the object of obtaining a higher electromotive force, the, with the objective of obtaining a higher electromotive force. So, like I said, <clears throat> excuse me. So, like I said, it's very high output DC current. Um, what he says, um, both connections here to use and other conditions, speed, dimension, disk necessary to secure good and practical results. This difficulty still felt to be a serious obstacle to use this kind of generator. These objections I have sought to avoid for this purpose. I construct a machine with two fields, see, each having a rotary conductor. Uh, let me go up here. Mount between its poles, but the same principles involved in the case of both forms of machines described. Uh, the disc form flanges, the manner of pulleys, so the flanges on the outside, like I described to you, like, they're like pulleys, connected together by a flexible conducting band or belts. So that outer belt is a conductor, and uh, 
typically, you know, probably was made of mesh, copper, or something like that. So, uh, let's see, go down here. Uh, I would call attention to the obvious fact that if the direction of the magnetism in both fields would be the same as the direct result obtained by driving in the disc, then you want to drive the disc in opposite directions, basically, you know. So, either the fields go, either the disc ro rotate in opposite directions, or you have the fields in opposite directions. So, you get a, a, a direct current. But he's saying for the purpose of an, of an alternating current, you could do that, too. All right, so let's go down. And that's about it, you know, pretty simple, but uh, very powerful, very practical direct current generator. And a guy named uh, Bruce De Palma uh, came up with this, uh, did the same. He replicated this and got a lot of credit for, oh, you know, he discovered space power, or whatever, you know. What he found is that you don't actually have to... Uh, the magnets can actually spin with the disc. You don't have to have a stationary field with the disc rotating through it. See? And that's kind of interesting that, you know, how is it generating current? You know, it's not doesn't seem to be rel moving relative to the magnetic field. The magnetic field is simply on there. But as the magnetic field rotates with the disc, it, it seems to disturb the, the um, we'll just call it the Higgs field, for lack of a better word, you know, what they used to call the aether. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just ate that delicious pizza and I'm still kind of trying to burp up stuff. So, um, a flexible metallic belt. A flexible metallic belt is used, is passed over the flange of the two discs, desire to maybe drive one of the discs. I prefer, however, to use this belt merely as a conductor. And for this purpose, you know, so he uses the other things to drive it. You know, he's not using that belt as the driver, it's just as a conductor. In and end of the terminals, for sake of clearness, they're shown provided with springs that bear on the end of the shafts. That's the brushes that pick up the, the uh, and if self-excited, the copper bands around its poles or conductors, the wires shown in the drawing may be used. Those are the wires I described to you, where it's, how it's wound. It's just wound, you know, straight across. So it's like a, it's basically like an electromagnet going one way and an electromagnet going the other way. Uh, and then he has his claims. What I claim is an electrical generator with a combination of two rotary conductors mounted in unipolar fields with a flexible conductor or belt passing around the peripheries of said conductors. That's it, you know. Pretty pretty simple, pretty cut and dry and straightforward. So, um, and that's it. But that is, that is my favorite uh, as far as his DC generator. It's just a very high current, uh, practical DC generator. Yeah, it's got a lot of copper in there, but um, you could just use very powerful neodymium magnets. You don't have to have uh, all that iron there. It doesn't have to be so big and heavy. And, um, you know, yeah, the thicker your copper disc, probably, and the greater your field strength, then obviously the greater your current that you'll have available. And the higher the voltage, the higher the flux density, the higher the voltage that you'll get out of this. But it will be a direct current of very high intensity. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.